name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Today we are making a pot holder. They are awesome. They are beautiful. They are functional and I like them 10 times more than I like this guy. Not so great. So let's dive right in on how to make it. All right, let's get started. So the only materials you're going to need are any cotton yarn and I have Lily's cotton yarn here. I don't know what color am I using? I am using the color red. Sweet. All right. And then I'm also going to be using a size G or four millimeter crochet hook. I'm literally going to be using the exact same pattern that I used when we were making our washcloths. So if you need any extra instruction, make sure you watch that video. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and go through how to make the pot holder for you right now. I'm going to start by taking off this label right here so it's easier to use the yarn. Put that aside. I'm going to grab the end right there. And I start with my knot. So I literally take it, turn it, stick it through the back there. Grab my crochet hook and pull it tight. Okay. So for my pot holders, I'm going to chain 31 chains. So let's go. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, you want to keep your chain loose. You don't want it too tight. Six. Twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. And that one extra there is just our turning chain so we can turn to row two. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to go into row two. Row two is just that half double crochet in the second chain from your hook and then slip stitch. And you repeat half double crochet, slip stitch half double crochet, slip stitch, and that is the pattern. So let's go ahead and dive right into that first half double crochet. So from my hook, there's one space and two space. I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook into that second space right there. Remember, I personally like to have two yarns on the top and one on the bottom. So when I yarn over and I insert my hook, me one, two on the top, one on the bottom. Pull that yarn through that hole. You'll have three loops on the top. Yarn over and pull through all three of those. That's your first half double crochet. In the very next spot, we're gonna slip stitch. So two on the top, one on the bottom. Pull that yarn through the hole and you continue it straight through. All right, now we're gonna go back to half double crochet and then slip stitch, and that's the repeat pattern. So half double crochet, and I'm gonna grab some slack here. Make sure that you're not crocheting too tight. Next space is going to be my slip stitch and repeat across. So half double crochet, and slip stitch. Double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, oops, and 
and ending with a slip stitch. Awesome. Okay. Finished this row. I'm calling this row two. Row one would have been our chain 31 row. This is row two. Okay. I end with a chain two. So if you see two spots right there, and then I will turn my work and I will continue that repeat pattern. HDC or half double crochet in that first space right there. And then in the next space, I will slip stitch. So we're yarn over and so your hook into that first spot, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. That's a half double crochet. In my next space right there, I'm going to slip stitch. So I insert my hook, grab that yarn, pull it through, and then I pull that through my first loop. That's a slip stitch. Okay, then half double crochet. And slip stitch. Half double crochet. And slip stitch. Okay, repeat that pattern, half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, all the way across to the end. Next hole will be a slip stitch. Ending with a half double crochet. And last hole is a slip stitch. Fantastic. Okay, we just finished that row. You can start to see a pattern. Looks beautiful. All right, if you need to count your rows, each one of these slants right here, slant, 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 these slants will show up after two rows. So I have this, so two, and then one up here, so three. I just finished row three. Look on this side. You'll see the slant, that's two. And then this bottom row right here would be row th three. So I have just finished three rows. I'm going to chain two, one, two, I'm going to turn my work, and I'm going to repeat the pattern of half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, slip stitch, all the way for 30 rows. So count your rows. So remember each slant counts for two and I will meet you at the end of row 30. Okay. So half double crochet in that first one, slip stitch, Oops. half double crochet. All right, we finished 30 rows. Let's count them just to make sure. I like to count sideways. So there is my two, my little diagonal. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, and 30. Perfect. At the end of row 30, I am going to, so let me back it up. Okay, so I'm going to half double crochet, slip stitch, half double crochet, right in there, slip stitch. And I'm going to chain only one. Turn the work. And now I'm going to crochet a border. 
around the entire work. The entire work. This just cleans up all the edges. And I'm only using a single crochet. So in each space, I'm going to single crochet. And that is just inserting your hook into the hole, pulling yarn back through that hole, yarning over and pulling through. That's a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. We want thirty because that's how many we started with. Perfect. Went all the way across. In that last space, it's a corner, so we want to turn our work sideways to be able to continue doing the border down this side. In order to do that, we want to put three single crochets in that one hole. So I already did one. I'm going to go back in that same hole. Two. And again, one more time in that same hole. Three. Perfect. Now we have this great turn, this great corner that looks real cleaned up and polished. We turn our work, so we are now working on this side. Okay, this side, there's a whole lot of spaces, and it can get real confusing if you just go ahead and put cro single crochets in every one of those holes. If you do that without counting, your work's going to end up fanning out like this because you're going to put too many single crochets in there. We know that there are 30 rows, so we should only have 30 single crochets across this edge. We're going to count this space on the corner as one. Then I'm going to put my hook right in the middle there. So I'll take that out so you can see where I put, I put it. So if this is what I'm looking at, I'm going to put a crochet there like at the bottom of the valley and then the top of the valley and then the bottom of the valley and the top of the valley. Bottom and the top. Let's do it together. So I'm going to go in the bottom. And that'll be my second single crochet. And then I'm going to go in the top. That'll be my third crochet. And then I'm going to go in the bottom there fourth crochet and then the top fifth crochet then in the bottom sixth crochet and in the top seventh crochet and 29. Now you, at this point you might be freaking out because we just got to the end but I stopped counting at 29. Well actually we have reached the very first our base chain and so it's we're really actually going to crochet in this one last 
spot right here. This spot right there. That is the first spot of our base chain. So that's actually our number 30. That's our corner spot. So in our corner, we have to single crochet three times. So that's one, back in there, oopsie, dropped it, oops, I hit it frayed, there we go, back safe spot, two, and one more time, three, great, okay, we are on the bottom row here, it's going to single crochet again, 30 across, they look a little weird, because we're going into the top, but this is the spaces, these are the spaces we're going to crochet in. So, started with one from the corner, two, three, Great. Okay, last corner space. One, two, three. Okay, we have actually found our original beginning tail. What I like about doing an edge is that you can actually completely cover that up so it is invisible. Again, we are on that weird side where we have those valleys and peaks and valleys and peaks. So it's very important that you remember to count here. We're going to count to 30. Corner space counts as one. Lay you down flat. Perfect. Okay, I just crocheted over that tail and it is now invisible. You can't even see it. And we can keep going. <laughs> reached 30 our corner space if you notice there's already a crochet in there so we're only gonna do two one two and then this one would be three for our corner and to connect them we're gonna slip stitch so I'm gonna go in to this space right here Gonna pull yarn through it. I'm gonna pull yarn that straight through, and it just connects. Isn't that pretty? Just goes so beautifully together. All right, now we're gonna cut off this string. We are done with this piece of work. Grab my scissors. I'll go ahead and cut off enough to leave a little, a little tail. We don't need much because literally all we need that little tail for is to make our knot. So I yarn over and I pull that through the hole. 
pull it tight. Pull it nice and tight. And then I want to, or I want to get rid of this tail and a little bit, clean it up just a smidge. I'm going to put my hook right there through. I'm going to pull that yarn through. I'm going to give it a little tug. And like it just makes it lay flat. I'm going to do that one more time and come from the back of the next one. Gone for now. Okay, so our beautiful work is done for one, but I want to make two of these. My pot holders are two washcloths thick. So I'm going to repeat this entire process to make another one of these. I want two of these. So put that one aside. Grab your yarn. Now I'm gonna make the other side the same color, but this is where you can have some fun. You can pick a different color and then make one side this color and then you flip it over and the other side will be a different color. You can have fun with it. Just customize it however you want. I have a Christmas pot holder that one side is red and one side is green. It's kind of fun. So let's make number two. Starting from the beginning, loop over, through. Okay, and we're going to chain 31. And in this process, guys, if you want to pause and go back to the beginning of the video and just repeat the entire process, I will meet you back once you have two of these. Cool. All right, I'll see you soon. All right, awesome. We have finished both of our washcloths. We have two now. One, two. They are identical. So see, I see both tails. So I'll put the tails together. I'm just gonna line them up, just stack them perfectly on top of each other. Beautiful. And maybe bit. Great. Okay, so now all we do, the last step to make this a pot holder is to sew these two together. And I like to crochet them together with a single crochet. It's actually very pretty when you do so. So I take my crochet hook, I take my yarn. Oh, there it is. I found it. There we go. There you are. All right, flip it over. Pull it through. Tighten it a little. Great. I'm going to take the corner. So, corner here. So, if I look, there is one, two, three for that corner. I'm going to go right in the middle one. And then the same thing here in this corner, there's one, two, three and go right in the middle one. Okay. I'm going to uh, close this together, grab that yarn with my crochet hook, pull it through both of those, and I'm actually gonna just slip stitch to begin. I'm gonna tuck this string in between the two, and I'm gonna sandwich it together. Perfect. Now I'm ready to go. I'm going to put my crochet hook into the next space and it should be lined up, both of them. Yarn over and pull it through both of those holes. Yarn over both of those. Okay, 
next hole there. And I look at this one, put it straight through, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, through both. Perfect. So each hole should be lined up. That's what was so great about doing a border around both washcloths before we sewed them together to make them into a pot holder is all of these holes should line up. And if you ever get off count or if they ever get a little crooked, you can always go back and find where it's supposed to go. So then the next hole, through both of them, yarn over, yarn over. And this is all we are doing around the entire, the entire border of the whole washcloth. We are just sewing the sides or crocheting the sides together. excited and last stitch yay awesome all the way around okay gonna close it up right here with this spot grab the yarn through it's a slip stitch, finishing it off. We're going to cut the yarn right there. You drop that, put that aside. Yarn over, pull that through. I'm going to do one more knot just because I like to make sure that it's not going anywhere. Oh, little tail didn't quite make it through. There we go. Pull that real tight. Yay. Okay. And now we're going to weave in that end so it disappears. So I'm going to come in the back. So here is the next hole right there coming from the back, pull that yarn through it, okay, give that a little tug, it just kind of brings everything together, so it, I want it to kind of form that straight line, then in the next hole, pull that through, pull that through, great, grab my scissors, because I don't need that much of a tail. Again, I only need like that much. So I'll cut right there. Grab my glue. Okay, and again, this is the Quick Dry Fabric Fusion. Dries clear and flexible. Yes, I get it at Hobby Lobby. No secret there. If you're going to get at Hobby Lobby, make sure that you use the coupon code. It saves 
my butt a lot of the time. Smallest little bit. Small, small, small. Flop it over. I almost wipe. Like I flop and wipe. And then I try to make it form into the line a little bit so it just disappears. Now when it dries, that's all going to be clear and you won't even see it, but it'll be flexible. So you can still use it without it being rock hard. Well, here is our pot holder and it looks amazing. You did a great job, congratulations. If you had a lot of fun crocheting along with me, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to keep learning more of the patterns that I have coming, make sure you hit that big subscribe button there because I have a lot more on the way. Well, my name is Tiffany Hansen. I had a great time crocheting with you. I'll see you next time. Bye.